a little, uh, a little break. You should go. Break. Look at that. Beautiful. I would absolutely love, if possible, to see if I can find those gilt heads again. Visibility looks incredible. Um, it's been calm offshore winds for a few days, so. Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I've finally got around to editing down some of this footage of what was probably the most amazing spearfishing trip I've ever had. The numbers of fish that we saw on this day were unlike any other trip I've ever had. And it ended in myself catching um, basically my ultimate goal, the gilt head bream. Yes, yes. <laughs> so if you remember a couple of videos ago, I actually lost a gilt head and I was pretty gutted for quite a few weeks and I knew that I had to get back to the spot and explore and just have a really, really good look to see if I could find them again. So literally uh, last day of November, I went down there with a couple of members of Team Starpoint, Matt Shaw and the Frenchman. We were out on Matt Shaw's boat. We headed out there, we dropped anchor and we had we all had a just really good explore. So the trip actually started with a really embarrassing moment for me. Um, I'd been snorkeling for about 10 minutes. And I looked below me and I saw this beautiful trigger fish just cruising there in the water column. Now, I didn't shoot down on the trigger. They have incredibly hard um, leathery skin. So if I'd have shot down on it, very likely to have the spear glance off it. I was very, very excited, but I thought, you know, this is fine. I did a duck dive about 20 yards away, swam gently over the top of the kelp towards where the trigger was and waited for it to present itself side on. Absolutely shocking miss. It's hard to include this in the video, but we all have them now and again. Anyhow, the day was young, so decided to press on, see what else I could find. Um, the tide was taking me very, very gently, parallel to the coast. And I was just letting it take me. It was nothing to write home about. And I could just survey the kelp below me. It was really nice and clear. Uh, visibility was eight to 10 meters. And all of a sudden, I basically came to this drop-off. <laughs> I, as I collected the spear, the gilt head was, sorry, the um, the trigger fish was just looking at me like this. Ah, uh, fluttering. Fluttering yeah. around my face. Yeah. So I thought, fair play, you know, <laughs> you, you, you carry on. <laughs> and then came round the corner and there was a kind of drop off. And uh, there was some mullet coming through and, and a couple of small bass. And then this belter just swam right underneath me. So <laughs> extremely happy that bit of an upgrade from the trigger fish anyway so very very happy Fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. so yeah after a bit of a rest on the boat and a bit of a debrief for the boys um, we decide to jump back in the water um, having you know seen the pollock I just caught and the numbers of fish we all agreed this was going to be the spot to just work through the day
So I decided at this stage to draw a line under the pollock um, and focus on really trying to get those gilt heads. So I remembered they were slightly uh, further out from where I was currently hunting. So I decided to paddle about 50 yards out and see if I could find the, the area I was in last time. Once I was out there, I did a couple of dives and on about my third dive, I just got hit by a wall of hundreds of bass. It was absolutely crazy. Now bearing in mind the bass are still in season, however I really didn't want to go shooting at the bass because if there's going to be gilt heads cutting about in them, if I start shooting into the bass, basically I'm going to deny myself the opportunity of catching the gilt head. The tide had now switched and I knew I was drifting towards where I'd seen the gilt head before. I remember this one dive, I went down and found this kind of raised plinth and I was just hiding in it and the bass were just cruising round and round and round me, hundreds of them like a wall. You could see the bait fish higher in the column that they were feeding on. I knew that any minute there could be one just appearing in the school of bass because that's what they do and I know that in this area I've seen them here so <clears throat> it was a case of just trial and error. I was just drifting very slowly the tide and I was just diving, diving, diving um, to see if I could find any of the gilt heads. Eventually I did a dive into about 12 meters of water and as usual there were hundreds of bass but suddenly they parted like a curtain. I finally found what I'd been looking for for hours. I went down a huge wall of bass with the bait above and the but it was the way it happened the bass parted and there were just two gill heads looking wow. at me just both broadsides oh fantastic so I just beautiful shot as well straight to the yeah. plate couldn't be happier because yeah lost one about four weeks ago so there we go <laughs> back down and then just pace myself and just gliding and I saw this one just like hanging in between a crack really and then just like glide over it and she just starting gliding in wow. between the rocks <laughs> and, I, and I took a shot as you oh can see my God. it went here oh, from the top wow.
from the top. So I'm about to show a very, very simple but delicious recipe for cooking the gilt head. All you need is some potatoes, a lemon, some olive oil, salt, fresh parsley, clove of garlic, a green onion, some rosemary, I think this is really important, um, and of course, your royale. So while the potatoes get a head start for 10 minutes, it's time to prepare the fish. So you need two slices of lemon, some garlic and a sprig of rosemary and basically a bit of salt to go inside the cavity. So on with the green onions and, and garlic. Just smidgen of salt tiny bit and then on with Mr. Royale. All of the juices from the fish run down into the potatoes and just make this incredibly tasty amalgamation of flavours. Um, I reckon now it's going to need probably around about half an hour and then we'll come back to it and uh, we'll taste it. Just as a point, it's really easy to tell when the fish is done, when this pectoral fin pulls out really easily. You can see the soft flesh is coming away now and so I'm going to plate up. It's going to be so soft and sweet and tasty. How is it George? <laughs> is it tasty? Good. It's a lot juicier than bass. That's the fish I compare it to as bass. It's a lot juicier. It's definitely sweeter and softer in texture. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed my storytelling of the day, um, recounting what was my most amazing day ever spearfishing. I've never seen that many fish just persistently dive after dive after dive. If you are on your spearfishing journey and you're looking for these fish, all I would say is don't give up you will find them eventually. They will probably turn up when you're least expecting them to. Um, but when they do, when you finally do find them, it's worth every single minute of the search. So thank you very much for watching. Very, very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone. And um, I look forward to bringing new videos in the new year. So thank you very much. See you on the next one. Cheers.